following program was recorded before a live microphone. Now it's time for some really mature comedy. It's so old. How old is it? It's so old, the material is copyrighted BCE for before comedy existed. So here comes senior sex. No, 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 it's not sex like S-E-X. It's sex as in seconds, senior seconds, because senior moments are too hard to remember. Got it? Got it. Now here's Stephen Wrong with senior seconds, because senior moments are too hard to remember. Right, Stephen Wrong, not right. Because for every right, there's a wrong, right? Wrong. Right. Excuse the flashlight for a spotlight, folks. Hey, lighting systems are expensive. This act is operating on a shoestring. <laughs> now, if my age is slip-ons, shoestrings are a thing of the past. <sighs> oh, excuse me, folks. It's not you, it's me. I just don't seem to get enough sleep these days. I read somewhere that for every hour of sleep you miss, you lose a little off your lifespan. If that's the case, I figure I've been dead for about three years. <laughs> so you folks have the privilege of being enter entertained by the first zombie comedian. <laughs> to start off with, I just want to let you know that I run a clean act. You won't hear any F-bombs like some of these comics today use because they can't think of anything more clever. The only F-bomb you might hear is the kind that makes you glad you're out there and I'm up here. <laughs> and if I cross the line, but you're not sure, just ask your grandkids. <laughs> you're a great audience, you really are. I'd like to take every one of you home to meet my wife. God bless her, we've been together over 55 years now. We've been talking about taking a second honeymoon up to those big falls between New York and Canada. Uh, uh, yeah, Niagara, that's the one. We're calling it our Viagra Niagara. <laughs> you know that little blue pill that you take when your pencil has more eraser than lead in it? Yeah, that Viagra. Funny thing about that, I didn't have that problem until recently, so I didn't know much about it when it came up, or it wouldn't come up. My wife talked to her urologist about it. She gave her some samples. When the time came, she said, I got something for you to try to help you out. It's in the cabinet in the kitchen. It's blue. So I go in the kitchen and look in this box. Stuff in it's blue. So I come back with the box. Is this it? I said. It says on the box, Miracle Grow. <laughs> Talk about senior seconds. The other day she wasn't feeling so well. So she asked me to pick up a few groceries. She wrote down what she wanted and put it on the kitchen table. Well, I walked out without it. As soon as I walked in the store, I reached in my pocket. All of a sudden, this listless feeling came over me. <laughs> yeah, my wife the other day, she said, remember, remember when you had those six pack abs when you were young? What happened to them? I said, Baby, I still got them. They're just here under all those other six packs. <laughs> I love dogs, you know. I mean, they, they really make you feel young. So I, I got this little dog, and I take him for walks, and, and he likes to carry his little chew bone with him. But he drops it in the yard halfway to our walk, and I, I have to pick it up, so I put it in my pocket. So you could say a couple day, times a day I'm walking around with a bone in my pants. <laughs> we did take a trip to London seven years, several years back. We got a room in a swanky hotel on the West End, a short walk from Westminster Abbey in Parliament. Trouble is our room opened right out into the alley where they collected the garbage. 5 a.m. and here comes a truck. I hear it backing up and a bunch of footsteps. Then I hear in perfect harmony, all clear, all clear, all clear. I yell down, what the hell is that all about? Driver yells up, 
You don't play him no more, mate. They're just me backup singers. <laughs> they do a lot of things differently there. That night I turned, tuned in on the little 13 inch or however many centimeters they measure their TVs. Tuned in on a big celebration. All these limos were pulling up in front of this elegant building, spotlights and flash bulbs everywhere, men and women in tuxes and gowns walking down the red carpet. Geez, I thought, this must be the British version of the Academy Awards. Wrong. Let's call it the Academic Awards. All this was for the UK's Teacher of the Year. What's that say about priorities? Ah, but to get back to the family, Plumbing worked back in the day, and we had two great kids. Funny thing, you ever talk to kids these days? I mean, to listen to them, you'd think they never quite do anything. For example, I was like walking down the street. And I ask you, what is like walking down the street? I mean, you're either walking down the street or you're not. And I love this one. I was like really hungry, you know? Same thing. What is like really hungry? I've been really hungry, and I know there's nothing like it. Listening to my act, you can well believe that. <laughs> and secondly, you know how kids think they know more than you do? So how come they have to follow up everything with, you know, if you go by that, <laughs> we know everything in the whole damn world. <laughs> I've been retired for several years. Like a lot of guys, I took up golf. You remember that commercial for some life-lengthening drug or another where the husband and wife are on the golf course? She says he's the world's worst golfer. Well, I auditioned for that commercial. I really did. But I wasn't good enough. <laughs> so that, that tells you about my game. But I'm philosophical about my score. Say a pro takes up golf at age six. I was 60. So working the numbers, he should be 10 times better than me. So if he shoots a par of 72, if I make anything under 720, I figure I'm ahead of him. <laughs> I must say, however, that I have broken 80. Still paying for all those damn numbers too. <laughs> Speaking of commercial, have you seen that one for the drug that's supposed to improve your memory because it comes from jellyfish? Now you tell me, how the hell does anyone know what kind of memory a jellyfish has? All they do is float around with the tide. Hey man, what you up to? Nothing much, just floating around like usual. I think I seen that bunch of rocks down there before. Was it yesterday or the day before? I don't know. Who cares? Let's go steam some breakfast. <laughs> I haven't been a comic all my life. I know some of you say I'm not one now and never will be. But I can't help some people have no sense of humor. I've been a musician, a supervisor, a woodworker. I once worked in a wood shop where they made just about anything that could be made out of wood. We had one guy who was a real ace, could build anything. We got him from a boat works. And you have to know your stuff at a job like that. Well, one day he was working on a yacht and he hit his head. Poor guy wound up, wound up making himself a little dinghy instead. So they came in. When I was a musician, I worked with a guy who was one of the greatest songwriters I've ever known. He was so good. He was so good that when he got the jitters, he'd take a tranquilizer and compose himself. <laughs> I know a lady who was a social worker. She worked at some relief agency. And one day, this, business, this homeless guy comes in and demands a hundred bucks. She said, I'm sorry, sir. We just don't hand out money like that. There's a process involved. The guy says, don't give me that. Just give me the hundred. She got a little miffed at that and said, Look, if you want help, you have to go through the proper channels. Well, the guy says a few choice words about what she can do with her channels and spits on the floor and storms out. 
She goes to the door and yells after him. Hey, buddy, what do you think this is? The Salvation Army? Yeah, that Salvation Army, real spit and polish outfit. I went into one of these dollar stores the other day and asked, asked if I could buy a dollar. Hey, it's a dollar store, right? The cashier looked at me and said, sure, that'll be a dollar twenty-five. Inflation, you know, everybody else went up, so we had to go up a quarter. Jeez. I have one of those digital alarm clocks. Don't you love today's technology? One of the little lights on the display went out. <clears throat> now a five looks like a nine or vice versa. When I get up to go to the bathroom, I don't know if I just went to bed or if I'm just getting up. Well, much to your relief, I know. I'd like to leave you with a few imponderables. You know, those questions that no one takes seriously enough to try to find an answer. Some are mine, some I've borrowed. Here's one from the late, great George Carr. If God commanded the serpents to talk, crawl on their bellies for the rest of the time for tempting Eve, how did they get around before that? Whoa! Almost got decked by flying, flying diamond back. Or maybe they had wheels. Watch out for that S curve. <laughs> this one's from Robin Williams. If they call it rush hour, how come nothing moves? <laughs> and here's a new take on an old one just for us. If a tree falls on your house and your hearing aid batteries go dead, does it make any sound? And why can't they declare no-fly zones around picnic area? Well, thanks for sharing a few of your moments with me and hopefully, hopefully a few smiles. And if you're like me and you do only one thing tomorrow, share one of those smiles with someone. Thanks for listening.